accessible. Look, again, slight digression. Inflation is up. It's up. And coming from a family when the price of gas went up, you felt it in the household, you knew what it was like, it matters. And look, the fact is that we're in a situation now where, uh, um, you know, you should have peace of mind. I know food prices are up, and we're working to bring them down. As I said, I grew up in a family where the price at the pump went up, you felt it. And I understand. But these things are necessities. We're working to bring down prices where they're not totally what families, in fact, uh, have to pay now. I'm going to work like the devil to bring gas prices down, which I <laughs> What did he say? I'm going to work like the devil to bring gas prices down. These times that we're living in are such a difficult time to deal with. I mean, dealing with this silent economic war that is being waged against us is one thing. But it makes it completely challenging when everyone you hear is lying to you. It becomes very hard and frustrating when you realize just how much there is a missing source of truth and sense going on in this world. And the worst part is that those who have a good understanding are called crazy or haters and much worse things just because we look deeper than what the mainstream news tells us. Just last week, I had to cut off someone I have known for a long period of time after the fake jobs report for January was released. This friend solely listens to CNN and the spin that his job gives him. And when I had a very sensible alternative view, instead of him conversing around it and trying to understand my point of view, he decided to attack me and say things about me friends should not say. Now, I know and understand the reason. It's the same reason why it's so hard to live during these times. It's what Paul prophesied in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And for this reason, Elohim will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. These people have pleasure in unrighteousness, so they cannot understand the truth and they love the lie. People are more comfortable living in the lie than dealing with the truth. The leaders of this world are lying to everyone, keeping everyone asleep, distracted, and unprepared for where they are taking this world. And the masses know something is wrong, but they are not strong enough to deal with reality. They want to believe that things are getting better, rather than opening their eyes and looking through the eyes of reality. Last Friday, the jobs report for January 2022 came out and the news jumped on it like clowns, and they blew it up to sound like it was the greatest news ever. Now, I will cover the reality behind this report and the things that the news doesn't say, but you didn't need to understand how much that report was missing context if you just went outside and looked at reality. After last Sabbath, I went out in town and looked at the gas prices, and I was shocked. Where I was, gas was $3.49 a gallon for regular. So I asked different friends in different locations in the country, and some said where they were, gas was $4 a gallon and $5 for premium. The powers that be turned it up on everyone very quietly. And I knew that we were far from done with this price escalation because oil has been moving higher daily on its predicted climb to over $100 a barrel. So who cares what the job report was saying and the false hope that the media was giving? because reality was showing something completely different for the general public. The people can't afford these prices. So who cares that people are hiring more if they can't afford to live? And the thing about it is that if our media wasn't engaged in such mental warfare against us, they would be helping us prepare for the times at hand, giving us advice on preparing ourselves for these hard times and what we should expect as inflation continues rising and prices on items continue to climb. But the truth is that these outlets do not care about us. They are all about profits and moving the world to be reactive to their agenda of collapsing the world financial system. So it is up to us to live in reality and not be one of their tools. So what I want to do this week is to give you a dose of reality from my vantage point, going over what the news is not saying, and provide some practical advice for believers living in this world that are not living under this strong delusion. We must be awake and not asleep, and I pray this advice assists you with keeping your eyes open 
and not following your enemy into the traps that they are preparing for the world. Let's begin. Okay, so let's go back to that jobs report I was talking about. When they released it on Friday, they were praising it like it was something unexpected and a big surprise. This is CNN Breaking News. We have major breaking economic news. Surprising breaking economic news. Confusing breaking economic news. The January jobs report is in, and it's way better than people were expecting. Seen it? Yeah, not at all what we were expecting because Omicron really ravaged the economy during January, but instead 467,000 net new jobs added back into the economy in January. Uh, that is the most jobs gained since August 2021. This is not the weak jobs figures that so many people had thought. Let me tell you why they were bracing for something terrible. It's because the survey from the government happened the very week some 12 million people were out sick or taking care of someone else uh, who was out sick because of Omicron. So we were really looking for that distortion and didn't get it. I think what you can say here is there is surprising strength among employers who are hungry to hire workers, weathering even the Omicron a variant here. <laughs> and this was the source my friend tried to send me, an article from these people. I mean, when I watch this, I just see lies being spewed and mental manipulation on those that rely on these people for truth surprising breaking economic news, confusing breaking economic news. The January jobs report is in, and it's way better than people were expecting. Now for me, I actually read these reports and I look at the data for myself. But for those of you not learned in these economic numbers, which you think we should all be taught in our general education courses, we are in for 12 years from the age of five or six. I mean, why wouldn't they teach us how to understand how strong our economy is or how weak it is. But that's another subject. What I'm saying is that you don't need to read these reports to understand reality. You just need to think back in the past of what was going on prior to the month of January and put everything in context. Proper context of all things is what you need to place things in. What the news is not telling everyone is where we were just coming from. Do you remember one of the big labels they used in 2021? Yeah, they were speaking of the great resignation. People were quitting their jobs looking for better ones because the major employers coordinated a major increase in their hourly wages. So people were looking for better jobs, trying to make more money. But also on top of this, there was an even bigger backdrop that they refused to even mention when they were talking about that jobs report. Over the last few months before January, people were leaving their jobs because of Biden's vaccine mandates. And in January, the Supreme Court ruled against them and Biden dropped the mandates, allowing employers to hire again with less rules than there was just a month ago. It was a complete way of fabricating numbers. It's not like new industries were established, making the economy hotter and more robust. Those are reasons why people get excited about the job market. People are just going back to work again and employers are hiring for positions that were recently made vacant because of these government policies. But when you hear the news, they make it sound like this was not to be expected. Surprising breaking economic news, confusing breaking economic news. The January jobs report is in and it's way better than people were expecting. But why wasn't it expected? Anybody paying attention should have been able to foresee it. So for our news channels, our experts to act this way is obviously mental manipulation. The truth about that jobs report and what I was trying to communicate to my friend is that what they are promoting is a reason why the Fed is taking the actions that will start in March. And that action is the raising of rates. At that point, we haven't made a decision yet and we'll make that decision at the March meeting. Um, uh, we'll make a decision whether to raise uh, the federal funds rate. I, I would say that uh, the committee is uh, is, is of a mind to, to, to raise the federal funds rate at the March meeting, assuming that uh, conditions are appropriate for doing so. We have they are trying to control the narrative and act as if all of this is normal market cycles. They see this job report and they think, great, so this is a sign that things are going to come back. And then they look at the, the stock futures today and they're down. Put it all in context for us. Well, I, I think we can easily understand the, the stock market reaction, and that's simply uh, this guarantees that the Federal Reserve will not just raise in March, but will continue to raise rates 
uh, through the year, and it, and it quite frankly raises the possibility they'll raise more rapidly than, than they would before, perhaps even uh, twice as large as they'd expected at some point. There's some small chance of that. So, But if you just remember, just a little over a year ago, the Fed said they were predicting rates would stay at zero until 2023, with many of them believing there will not be any rate hikes in 2022. Federal Reserve leaving rates unchanged at zero to a quarter percent and continuing to project or forecast zero rates through 2023. Only one Fed official projects a rate hike in 2022, but bottom line is the very few are projecting anything to happen through 2023. So I most of them think no changes in interest rates uh, into 2023, only one saying that rates might go up in 2022. Did I? But of course now, our media completely forgets this. And now we're in the beginning of 2022, and the market is predicting at least four rate hikes in this year 2022. So, so potentially four hikes is what you're looking at next year. Yeah, I mean, that's possible. Let's see how the data turns out. Look, this was just a year off from when they predicted that there wouldn't be any. So what is actually happening? I'll explain it to you. But first, let me go back to that jobs report to help it make sense. The jobs report and the acting from our news media is all about controlling the narrative for the reason for the rate hikes that are coming. Are you concerned that the Federal Reserve is behind the eight ball on inflation and you're gonna to have to do some serious catch up here? I wouldn't say I'm concerned that we're behind, but I do think action is required. The Fed will look irresponsible if they were raising rates during a time where the economy was already cooling and unemployment was rising. Because what raising the Fed funds rate is supposed to do is to cool down a good economy and reduce the easy money printing and borrowing so that inflation can cool down. So in order to justify the raising of rates to quote unquote cool down the economy, you must justify and show that the economy is doing great and employment is doing great. So there is ample reason and support to move on with these raising of rates. So they are now telling us to expect at least four rate hikes in this year of 2022. And as long as the media can keep control of the narrative, there is no reason to alarm the public on what is really happening right before our eyes. They are playing games with everyone. And so you should not be paying attention to the opinions of the news media in regards to many things, but especially in regards to the state of the economy. The economy is not booming and thriving. Does it feel that way to you? That it's booming and thriving? No. The governments and businesses have just been addicted to free, cheap, easy money. But they couldn't do that forever. And the fact is that the game they were playing with the debt is about to run its course. And every indicator is flashing red with warnings. They have us focusing on the stock market, which rises during inflationary periods. But we should be paying attention to bond yields, like the 10-year. Because that shows what's going on with people's desire and appetite for our debt. You don't need to go that far to understand all this. Because the leaders of the world believe in Darwinian values of natural selection and survival of the fittest, they believe it is up for the strong to be able to get through what is coming to this world. And if you are weak enough to follow them and not control your own brain, then you are just a part of natural selection of the weak being overtaken by the strong. This is truly what they believe. So I am making this content to counteract their agenda and allow you to look at things with a more sound mind. The truth is a very simple one. There is a worldwide collapse happening with world fiat currencies, and it is a consistent and uncontrollable rise to economic collapse. This is not just a United States issue, but a worldwide issue. You see here in the United States, the Federal Reserve has been controlling the narrative in order to keep the general public from moving in panic, which has been the same for the governments all around the world. They use the media to keep people cool and believe that everything is under control. The situation becomes more clear when you actually look at what's happening all over the world and you put it all together. So let's take a look. Mr. Speaker, more than a quarter of Canadians have mortgages with a variable rate. The number of high leverage uninsured mortgages is more than 25% according to the Bank of Canada. The bank suggested today that it will raise interest rates soon and some experts predict five interest rate increases next year. How many thousands of families are at risk of losing their homes because this Prime Minister has ignored the inflation crisis? 
the right honorable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, we are extremely concerned with the rising costs of living faced by Canadians, which is why we have a concrete plan to take action on that, whether it's by investing uh, in childcare, whether it's more support for Canadians, or it's putting forward the most ambitious plan uh, on housing that this country has ever seen, which uh, includes $4 billion for municipalities to help build more supply. While yes, the other day, अच्छा और खीरा टिमाटर साठ रुपया किलो बेटी इतना महंगा क्यों हो रही है इतना सामान नहीं हम महंगा क्यों देंगे आंटी जब ऊपर से माल सस्ता आता तो यहाँ भी तो सस्ता बिकता है ना तो पीछे से मतलब माल महंगा और ही क्या पीछे से माल महंगा आता तभी यहाँ भी महंगा पहले भी महंगा थी मगर इतना महंगा नहीं थी जैसे सीजन में आलू हम पंद्रह दस रुपये किलो लेकर आते थे इस टाइम तीस रुपये किलो लेकर आए जैसे सब्जी मंडी जाओ तो चक्कर आने लगते हैं क्यों टमाटर का जब भाव पूछे पहले सीजन में बीस रुपये थे अब अस्सी रुपया आज के रेट अस्सी रुपये From energy and food to paper and rent, prices have been rising in Germany and across Europe. The latest data puts inflation in Europe's biggest economy at 5% year-on-year, the highest in 30 years. What should we read into this inflation data? In terms of fractions of a percent, it might not be all that far above the estimate, but it is above the estimate, and it takes us from an 11-year high to a multi-decade high on UK inflation. What does this do to the Bank of England's uh, thought process? Exactly. Well, it's above last month, and it's a 30-year high, as you say. It's driven by restaurants and food and furniture prices, which interestingly shows this has gone beyond energy. You heard Rishi Sunak there saying that it's a global crisis. It's, uh, it starts with energy, but this has gone beyond on that. So it really does increase the chance that the Bank of England goes for a back-to-back -back hike in February. These shopping bags get lighter with each visit. As Iran battles with inflation, it is these people that suffer the most. Prices have gone up so much that we're not able to buy basic things. Even buying simple cloth is not affordable for me. I'm not from Tehran, but even in my own city, prices are unaffordable. Prices of chicken, meat, rice and so many other foods are increasing day by day. Everywhere in the country is the same. For Turkey, 2021 was marked by a free-falling currency, the lira, and record high inflation. The government's monetary policy has sent the country into economic turmoil. And as Nick Schifrin reports, soaring prices have hurt Turks from all walks of life. The prices are too high. I mean, we can't afford to buy all we need. In the past, I used to buy a lot, cook a lot. Now I have to buy in small quantities and try to get by. Turkey is suffering its highest inflation in nearly two decades. From December 2020 to December 2021, prices rose more than 36 percent. Everything from food to gas. The economic crisis is everywhere. In December, bread lines stretched around the corner. And as the Turkish lira plunged, Turks around the country rushed to change money into U.S. dollars. As per the Prime Minister of Pakistan, the state of the economy has given Imran Khan sleepless nights. Now, Pakistan is facing the biggest economic crisis in history. It has been ranked as a country with the fourth highest inflation rate in the world. Okay, you should have seen a clear pattern from all that. And when you look at it from this view, this should start becoming more clear to you what is happening. But when you understand it, when including the United States, it should really provide you with clarity. Tonight, the alarming spike in inflation soaring to its highest level in nearly 40 years, casting a shadow over America's entire economy. The stunning surge in December, 7% over a year ago, the pace of inflation slowing slightly over last month still marking three straight months with inflation over 6%. Inflation sending already sky-high prices soaring even higher across the board. Gas prices up 50% over last year. Used cars and trucks rising 37%. Meat, chicken, fish and eggs 13% higher. Rent and mortgages going up 4%. 
Tonight, nearly half of all small businesses say they're having to raise their prices. Your purchasing power, the amount that you can spend in the economy is diminishing. And there's no getting around that. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger notes that average wages also rose over the past year by nearly 6% but they still didn't keep pace with inflation. That means a lot of Americans are falling behind every single pay period. President Biden said today he's going to, quote, work like the devil to try to bring down gas prices. But there's very little he can do. And if the Federal Reserve raises interest rates to try to slow inflation, that could slow the nation's economic... Can you see it? We are right now in the middle of the narrative of the currency crisis that will impact the whole world. And again, looking at it from the Darwinian stance of survival of the fittest, the strong are preparing themselves for it, while the weak are living like the world is moving back to normal. Prices are increasing dramatically on things that we all need for normal life. Gas for our cars are rising very high, getting close to all-time highs that we saw at the beginning of the Great Recession in 2008. Our electric and gas bills, our food, our clothing, general services. There is an increase in our cost of living that is coming upon us fast. And being that most of the people in this world live paycheck to paycheck, they will not be able to withstand it as prices continue to increase because our wages are not rising at the same level as the prices are. Now, again, like I showed you, this is not just an American issue, but a problem moving around the whole world because we are moving towards the conditions for a new world currency. Watch how many advertisements you'll see this year in the Super Bowl. I mean, they know what's coming. They're advertising a whole new system, but the people just can't see it. And they think it's just another way of making money. But it's so deeper than that. You see, in this current system, they can't continue printing money, lending money at 0% interest to banks, and buying their own bonds through quantitative easing policies without inflation becoming an issue. And they had been doing this for more than a decade since the Great Recession, but they pushed it on steroids during COVID. They kept printing money, giving stimulus, acting like it didn't even matter. The whole world was doing this. The world is plagued by debt and too much currency circulating all around the world. This is a manufactured collapse of the world financial system in order to bring in the conditions for the coming new world currency which again is very clear to see that it has to do with cryptocurrencies and the blockchain. And it is imperative that as you live today, you are not moving with blinders on, ready to be sideswiped by this agenda, but you are making plans for yourself to cover yourself and your family for the coming storm. I cannot tell you what the event will be that will be the ultimate catalyst for the crash, but I can tell you that it is inevitable that the crash will happen. They all know this. But they are doing a great deal to control the narrative so there is no panic amongst the world population and they can place the proper blame where they would like it to be and direct the anger of the population to their scapegoat which will either be war or conflict or a false flag event that will come with even more strong delusion than ever before i don't even like talking about what i think they're going to do because it just really sounds crazy the masses that are around you are not ready for it i mean just look at the majority of the people that you know and see walking around this world today. Do they look like they are ready for a major shift in the world that will leave them poor, desperate, and without options? These governments cannot fix this problem of inflation because they have printed way too much money and they have accumulated way too much debt. And an acknowledgement that you're limited in what you can do if, you, if, if, if you're relying on the Fed to make decisions and you're unable to get a Build Back Better proposal through, aren't you simply limited in what you can do to deal with inflation? Well, look, uh, as you know, Ken, um, the inflation has everything to do with the supply chain. And uh, I think what you're seeing is that we've been able to make progress. If you ever really want to understand it fully, just go back and look at what happened in Zimbabwe. I mean, I think they have a trillion dollar bill. You cannot fix inflation with this level of money printing except by resetting your currency, which is why the Fed is talking about bringing in a new digital currency. I mean, they're all talking about this, but they're not telling the general public and keeping the general public prepared. They're just walking you inch by inch, day by day, into their agenda. 
They have printed way too much money and they have accumulated way too much debt. In just the United States alone, the government debt has just reached over $30 trillion, which equates to over $90,000 owed by every citizen in this country. That's you, me, our children, everyone who is a citizen owes $90,000. I mean, our own officials have called it, saying that our path of debt is unsustainable. But I, I will say that, and as I, as I said in my statement, that the U.S. federal government is on an unsustainable fiscal path, by which is meant that, the, that debt as a percentage of GDP is growing and now growing sharply, growing, growing quickly, uh, faster, and, and that's, that is unsustainable by definition. We so it is extremely naive of us to watch gas prices rise in the way that it has, to watch how expensive food is becoming, to have to pay more than ever for the same services and goods that we've used all of our lives, but yet not prepare for what it all means for our complete economic future. If you have sighed at the gas pump or supermarket recently, you need to apply our full reality to your life today and live as one that will not be overpowered and overtaken by their agendas. They are not preparing the masses because the agenda requires the blame to be shifted to a proper scapegoat that will allow proper transition into the new world. And I wanted to make sure that it is covered and proper understanding is given so that you are able to think with a sound mind and not be led astray and moved into unsound reactions that will lead to submission to the beast. So now that you have a proper mindset of what is happening, let me provide you with some advice that you should put into practice as of right now. You see these times that are coming up, this is key distraction period. Everyone is getting ready to celebrate the pagan holiday of Valentine's Day, to spend the money they don't really have to tell the person that they love that they love them. Everyone is getting ready to be distracted by this dumb Super Bowl that is purely scripted and completely controlled. Everyone is distracted by things that do not matter while the things that actually do matter are coming upon them extremely fast and they're not doing anything to prepare themselves for it. People are just moving like zombies, doing irrational spending right before the times of a great reset of everything. Do not be like any of them. If you are a believer, you must be living as you're awake and not asleep. You cannot be walking like a zombie that is asleep to this world and what is happening to it. Do not follow these people. Be better than these people. Now, the first thing that you must do if you have not already done so, is transition your mindset from this blind optimism that the world is under and live in a biblical reality. I stress this in much of all of my videos. What is happening to this world is biblical. This is not some secular thing that has nothing to do with God. It is biblical. They are purposely crashing the world so they can reset everything. If you're not looking at things from a biblical perspective, you will lose this battle because the alternative is following their false narrative that is very intentional and coordinated in order to bring rise to the beast who we know as the Antichrist. I recently made a video explaining about this, showing this without question that the world is preparing for the Antichrist, and in order for him to rise, they must collapse and reset the world. He only will come at a time of great distress and trouble in the world. If you're not thinking biblically and viewing things from a biblical mindset, you will be overtaken by your enemy. Make sure you are viewing these world events as progressions leading up to fulfill Bible prophecy. It is important that you have the right mindset. Step number two, you need to make sure that you have built up your faith and dependency in the Most High. Let me be very transparent with you. I've been making these videos for a while, warning about the agenda leading to this new world order. I've been explaining much of these same things for years. Now, I'm not an insider, so I obviously don't have exacts and I don't set dates. I just see lies, narratives, and coming together of their agendas. I made preparation videos. I gave consistent warnings about being spiritually and mentally prepared and ready. I gave many warnings and pleas to everyone watching these videos to do what I am recommending right now to you and that is to make sure you have built up your faith and dependency in the Most High. But when COVID came on the scene, you could see the ones that took the advice versus those that ignored the advice and did not build up their faith. I mean, I saw it directly within my own family and friends who were walked right into believing these narratives. If people took this advice seriously, 
they would not have been moved by fear and they would have known who fully sustained them and protects them. Faith was severely removed from this earth when COVID came on the scene. And I promise you, whatever they have planned will be the nail in the coffin for those on the fence with their faith. If you are not right now making your trust and dependency in the most high, the most important thing in your life at this moment in time, you are headed for a ditch that will be too hard to pull yourself out of without him. And you may not have trained yourself enough to trust in his voice rather than trusting in everyone else around you that is saying something else. When the world was moving one direction during this pandemic, it required conviction and faith to stay planted firm and resting on our Father, knowing that He is our only source of protection and hope. Everyone had answers without Him and judged you when you brought Him up as the answer. This will not get easier when the next leg kicks off of their agenda. You need to make sure that you are making it your priority to know His voice when He is talking to you. You must make sure you understand how to be led by His Holy Spirit. You must understand the difference between the voice of the world and the voice from him giving you direction and leading. Understand what his will is for you and what he desires for you to do and not to do. You must understand what it looks like to trust him. You should understand what faith in him really looks like. And today you have a really good example because everything you see the mass is doing today is the exact opposite of what faith in him looks like. Look at everyone especially most of these people in these churches, and do the opposite and do not take their advice, but understand that your job may be to lead them and be the example for the true church to follow. Now, step three is important. Start fasting. Fasting is extremely important during these times and it will help you tremendously with step two. When you are fasting, you are doing without something that you feel sustains you and then turning to the Most High for that sustenance. You are building your dependency on Him and learning to trust in Him when you get weak. You are also activating activity in the spiritual realm that is guarding you and building you up. Now think about it. If you are fasting now and learning how to deal without food or other things voluntarily now while trusting in Him, imagine how prepared you will be when the world comes at you with a false agenda that makes you be without these things involuntarily. Let me give you some help and direction in this. This is something between you and Father, so it's not something you need to announce. Like, hey, yes, I'm fasting, everyone. Look at me. No, that is not what you should be doing. You can do a 24-hour fast for food. Now, don't be held to the time. You can make it longer or shorter. You can do a fast from meat and only eat vegetables for a week or two or three. This is between you and Father. It means something when you're actually giving up something and doing it without things you feel you can't live without. That's why food is always used. But fasting doesn't only have to be food. Many of us should fast from our phones, from social media, from the internet, from our friends, from the television, etc. Things that have been such a major part of our life that you feel you can't live without. It's time to start fasting from them and learning to live without them. This will provide great assistance for you during the times that are coming because you have been training yourself to depend on Father to sustain you and not these other things. If you're watching this, start fasting. Start slow if you have not built up your faith yet. Don't start off saying, I'm not eating food for three days. You've never tried and you still lack faith. Take your time and build up your dependency on Him. Fasting will help you do this in a big way. Step four, don't worry about your financial situation at this time. If you're not making a whole lot of money at this time and that doesn't allow you to store food and water and supplies, do not stress about this. Your financial ability has nothing to do with if you will make it through the end times and not accept the beast and his mark. It's not about your bank account. It's about your faith account. That's why building up your faith is the most important thing. Don't think about your financial status. Now, of course, if you're able, it's a good idea to prep with supplies for a rainy day. Absolutely. You see, the cost of everything is rising. So if you're able to buy your food at lower prices today than it will be tomorrow, that is just sound advice and it does help. I've made a couple videos providing some advice on preparation and I made a list to assist you with this. It's in the description box of this video. But again, if you're not able to, this is not something you lose sleep over and start acting in a manner that lacks faith. 
Step five, make sure you have physical Bibles and you have access to the word in your hand physically and not only by electronic devices. Have your own Bible and make it your prized possession and read it daily. If you're able to gift Bibles to those you know may need one, you should do this. Make this a part of your ministry. Step number six, reduce your lifestyle. Don't live like everyone else that is preparing for good times ahead because it looks like the pandemic is ending and things are getting back to normal. And try to tune out people in your ears that try to promote that thought to you. I have to do this often because a lot of people I talk to just aren't paying attention. So they're not thinking in the same manner and mindset that I am. Many people today are looking at things like the pandemic is ending and things are getting back to normal. And these people are living under the strong delusion, setting themselves up to not be ready to deal with a harsh reality. Your plans should be about preparing for a great reset of all things, not about building up your financial life. They're going to crash and change everything. It doesn't matter what you're doing if the price of everything keeps rising. You're not going to be able to withstand it. You have to understand the times that you're in. People focused on buying homes with debt and focusing on building up their financial security while at the same time they don't pay attention to the world financial system are completely foolish. Do not follow these people. But unfortunately, these people are in the abundance. Only take certain risk if you're aware of what you're up against and the possible repercussions if things go against you. You can't prepare for your personal financial life independently from what is happening in your government and within the financial system. This should be obvious advice if we just look back at 2008 at the Great Recession. What was everyone doing? Buying homes because they thought things were great and housing prices could never go down. They were moving based on following everyone else and did not have a proper understanding of the times that they were in. And many people's financial lives were destroyed because they were following what the news and what everybody else was doing and not following what was actually happening in the financial system. It was a bubble, it was an obvious bubble if you actually paid attention to what was happening. You would think that because of that error, people would be more cautious, use way less debt, and not over leverage themselves the same ways. But people are actually doubling down instead, making plans while ignoring the state of the world that they are living in. Make sure you are not one of these people. Step seven, stop believing the news. They are lying to you and they are only preparing the world to accept the narrative that is bringing worship of the beast. If you're placing your life and trust in these people that have time in and time again misled the public and have not left us prepared for any emergencies, then you have given them the right to deceive you. If you watch the news, watch it to understand the narrative and see exactly where they are hurting everyone too. Watch it from a perspective of narrative only. None of it is real. It's all a big movie. Step number eight, be ready for anything. Please don't say, well, this won't happen or it can't happen. Only say this if you're saying it from a view of Bible prophecy. But please don't underestimate these people and what they are capable of. If you do not underestimate them, you leave yourself less vulnerable to their surprise punches. This is the main advice that I have for you believers living during this time. This is what I do, and I hope that it helps you. This list is far from complete, and I know others may have better suggestions. If you do, please leave them in love in the comment section. Not for bickering or to prop yourself up as a know-it-all, but just to help our brothers and sisters be ready. As a believer, your focus must be on enduring and overcoming. I keep saying this. It should not be about trying to obtain this world. And if you apply these steps, this will help you in doing just that. The rest of the world is losing faith. It's very clear. So many people in the church today are tired of watching for the coming of Yahushua's kingdom. They are tired of believing in the promise of his return, and many are finding it easier to latch on to the promises of the beast. We were foretold of this in the second book of Peter, chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Knowing this first, the scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. But as we keep reading, 
he helped us in reminding us to do not forget this one thing that with Yahuwah one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day Yahuwah is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but is long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance the second Peter chapter 3 verses 8 and 9 you see you may be getting tired of receiving these warnings and you may be getting impatient and allowing fear to settle in on you because maybe you believe that he is delaying his coming or that it's just not going to happen during your lifetime. Please do not let this world do this to your faith. No, he has not come yet because he is being patient with all of us and allowing us to prepare ourselves for him. The world is not waiting on Satan to be ready to fulfill all of his agendas. No. Please do not believe and think that that is what is happening. The world is waiting on Yah. Everything is happening in his timing. Like I said, he is being patient with all of us and allowing us to prepare ourselves for him. Be grateful for this time. Do you know if he came pre-COVID, just how many people would not be ready for him? He has blessed us by giving us the time to prepare for him and build our relationship with him even stronger. Don't look at the time he has given you and tell yourself you have more time to ignore him and come back to him at a better time when you feel is more convenient for you. He is not slack concerning his promise and you should never look at him in this way and treat him like this. It is very clear what is happening in this world. You keep ignoring him, you will not be ready for him and what is coming to this world. Therefore, beloved, look forward to these things. Be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless, and consider that the long-suffering of Yahuwah is salvation. That's 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. And we'll close with verses 17 and 18. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Adonai and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. To him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do not follow the wicked and be led away in their error. He is giving you a message and clear evidence that you need to be ready for the fulfillment of his prophetic word. It is completely a misjudgment on your part if you choose to ignore this and live for the lies and deceit that the world is giving to the masses. I made this video so that you can have another perspective away from worldly mindsets, away from the liars that are keeping you distracted, but one that is focused completely about the coming kingdom of our Adun. Please make sure you take this time in your life to prepare yourself for a Messiah and not allow yourself to be led into the darkness this world is headed towards. You are blessed and loved. And if you walk in this love and receive the power and discernment and grace that is being extended to you, you will overcome. Hallelujah. You will overcome. So live completely as one who is blessed by our Savior and make sure as his day approaches, you are one that overcomes. Make sure of it. And be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to like it and share it with others. If you have not done so already, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, i like to thank all of you who support this ministry. Your contributions truly bless this ministry, and I'm thankful and always extremely humbled by your support. Thank you for being a blessing. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for watching. Be strong. Be ready and be blessed. I love you all.